strength of my life. Where would I be without him? Praise the name of the Lord. Where would we be without Jesus? He's so wonderful. He's so great. He's so merciful. He's so loving. He's so kind. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you, my brethren. Thank you for joining um, our teleconference. God bless you for joining us. We're going to go into our topic today again. Faith and favor with God. And we want to look at, you know, what happened to Job. Um, before I do, just have a short prayer. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we bless your name. Thank you for your loving kindness and tender mercies towards us. Thank you for a spirit life. Thank you that we are able to call upon your name. Lord, we ask you to be merciful unto us. We ask you to bless us. We're asking you to forgive us our shortcomings and perfection in our sins and give us grace for today. Lead us in your, lead us in the way we want us to go, Lord. We give you praise, we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. So we're going to look at this story, we're going to conclude with the story of Job. Um, faith and favor with God. And just to recap, we had talked about Abraham and what, you know, how God called Abraham and out of his house, out of his father's house, out of his kindred, and told him to go to a land that he would show them and how he would bless him and, and give him one son and give him that son who was Isaac. And said to him, the son that thou lovest, the one son, I threw him up on a sacrifice. And Abraham obeyed and took Isaac to offer him a sacrifice. And before he was about to slay Isaac, his son, God's angel said, lay not your hand upon him. And he found there at lamb, a ram in the ticket and offered that little ram for sacrifice. So God has a way of testing us. God wants us to have faith in him. God wants us to trust in him. God wants us to be remember that he is God. You know, though anyone that comes to God must believe. The Bible said they that come to God must believe that he is. He is God and that he's a reward to them that diligently seek him. So we know Whosoever diligently seek the Lord will find him. So, other than that, we was talking about Job and, you know, what Job went through, um, how Job had such great possession, thousands of um, oxen and camels and asses and all those things that Job had. And they were taken from him because the devil was jealous because he loved God. And the devil wanted to destroy him. And the devil said to God, does Job know, does Job serve God for naught? Because you build a fence around him. But take away the fence and see if he will not curse you. So the devil tempted God. And God gave him permission to go and to take away his job, job possession. And so he did. And in all this, Job did not sin against God. Job said, the Lord give it, and the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So in all this, he retained his integrity. And the devil was not satisfied, so the devil went back to God again. Because he did not curse God. He blessed God. He said, the Lord give it, and the Lord take it away. The devil went back to God and said, Skin for skin. Anything a man will give for his skin, but you touch his skin and see if he'll not curse you to his face. So God allowed the devil to go back and touch him. And from his crown of his head to the sole of his feet, he was covered with boils. And he suffered. Can you imagine the agony that he suffered? So he not only lost his possession, but he lost his, his own body. His skin became tormented to him. But yet he did not. He retained his integrity and he did not swear, did not curse God. And so we see as we go along, his friends came. He had three friends who came to visit him. And when they saw him, they were so shocked. They, they threw ashes upon their head. They went their mantles and they sat down for seven days, would not talk. 
because his grief was so great. It shows that in this life, brethren, we can go through many things. We can go through many, many things in this life. But we must remember that God is God. And there's nothing can change the fact that God is God. And not only that God is God, but that God can do the impossible. And in this situation that we find ourselves in, no matter how dire the situation is, God is able to take us out, bring us out, and restore unto us all that we have lost. And so I want to talk today about the when God spoke to, to Job, and that's in chapter 38 of, of Job, chapter 38. I want to look at these, these verses in chapter 38. After all that Job has been through, and all his suffering, and all his pain, and all his sorrows, and all the words that came to him from by his friend, without, they did not understand and knew how, why Job endured such suffering, such loss. And they began to even try to say, he must have done something wrong, why he suffered so much. And maybe God has forsaken him. Job chapter 38. It says, Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkness counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man, and I will demand of thee and answer me. So God is going to talk to Job now for the first time after all he's been through and all his friends came to talk to him and tell him God is going to speak to Job now because God is going to justify him. God is going to open his understanding even more because God knew that Job loved him. God knew that Job trusted him and going on. So God is bringing Job to account, even though he's been through so much. So the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkness knowledge by counsel? Darkness counsel by words of knowledge, without knowledge. Gird up your loins like a man, and I will demand of thee and answer me. So, Sometimes we want to have a clear understanding of sometimes things that happen to us, the trials that we go through. We know that God is a good God, but then we do not understand the limitation of our understanding. We do not understand the limitation of our perception of God, how, how little we know about God. Even though we are made in His image, but we are so limited in our understanding. And God wanted to explore the mind of Job to understand who he was, what he was, and the greatness and the power of him, of himself. So he said, where was thou when, where was thou when I laid the foundation of the earth? Declare, declare, if thou have understanding. So, you know, God is trying to open up Job's understanding, even though what he's been through and all his calamities, his pain, his sorrows. God wanted to open up his understanding even more. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. And who laid the measure thereof, if thou knowest? And who has stretched the line upon it? The Bible says in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And there was darkness upon the face of the deep. So the world was covered by water. And God called the earth out of the water. He said to Job, where were you when this was going on? Answer thou, if thou knowest. So these things, I, God knew and God knew that Job should have the answer. But because of the limitation of his understanding. But God wanted to open his understanding. He says, Whereupon were the foundation fastened, and who laid the corner thereof? When the morning stars spring forth, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. On 
who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth, and if it had issued from the womb? When I made the cloud garment and thick darkness, swallowing the band of it, and break up from the that the decree decree placed and set bars and said hitherto shall thou come and no further and there the proud wolves were waves stayed so god created the sea he created the land came out of the sea he gave command he gave command to the sea to the to the shore and said to the sea thus far no further he measured all these things he know the depth of the sea he knows everything how much do we know of the depth of the sea how much do we know of the breadth of the earth how much is our knowledge but yet god knew all these things and because we are so limited in our understanding that's why we have to look to God. We cannot be assured in our own understanding, in our own wisdom, because everything about us is limited. Our understanding, our wisdom, our knowledge, everything is limited. But with God, there's no limitation. And so God wanted Job to see how limited he was, even though he loved God, and that's why God was patient with him. And God spoke to him out of the whirlwind and asked him these questions and he said break and he says has thou commanded in verse 12 job 38 verse 12 has thou commanded the morning since the day and caused the day spray to know its place have we got power over the day as man we are so limited our understanding is so limited. Our power is so limited. But we know a great God who has these powers, who has the power to do all things. He can change the night into day. He can change the day into night. He can command whatever because he's God. He created. We make things out of something. But God is God. He made something out of nothing. He is the only one who can make things out of nothing. Everything that we have in this world is made out of something. So we have to understand this God that we serve. And we understand His love, His mercy, His compassion, and His power and His grace. And that His word is so powerful. His word can change night into day. His word can change every situation, just the word of God. Because in the beginning, it was just the word that made creation. It was just the word that made the earth. It was just the word that made all the animals and the beasts of the field, the fowls of the ears, the, 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 uh, the fowl of the air, the beasts of the fields, the fish in the sea. And God's word created them. So we see by his word, he made all things. In his, through his word, he formed all things. And he wanted to enlighten Job, his servant. One who trusted in him. One who leaned on him. One who would say, in one place, Job, say, Job said, Even though he slay me, yet would I trust him. That is a... A way of confidence to say how confident we can be in God. That we can say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And that's what, that's what God wants from us. To can say, he, I will trust him no matter, no matter what. And that's the kind of faith that justifies us, the faith that give us justification, the faith that the, the faith that give us favor with God. Well, no matter what the devil throw at Job, 
Job knew that he was going to believe and trust in the Lord. Wait. He said, I will wait until my change come. Oh, he said, I will wait until my darkness become light. Until my sorrows become joy. And this is what God wants of us, to trust in him in every situation. And going on, he says, and from the wicked their light was withholden, and the high shall and the high arm shall be broken. Thou hast thou entered in the spring of the sea, and hast thou walked in search of the depth thereof. We look at the sea, we look at the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, and we see all these these oceans and we see the we see how great those oceans are we see how wide the oceans are how much do we know about the depth of the sea but god who created it he knows the depth of the sea he knows the breadth of the earth he knows every living thing that move up on the earth because he made it and so god wanted to Open the understanding of Job. So he asked him all these questions. He went on to say, Hast thou perceived the breadth of the earth? Do we know the breadth of the earth? Declare if you know it all, he says unto him. And where is the light? Where is the way of the light? And, as to, and for darkness, where is the place thereof? Do we know where light comes from? Do we know where darkness goes to hide when the light comes? We don't know these things. It shows our limitation, and that's one thing we have to be conscious of from day to day, that we are so limited in our understanding. We are so limited in our power. We are so limited in every aspect of life. And so when we realize how limited we are, we go to the source of all things, which is the Lord and our Lord Jesus. We go to him who has power over all things, which is our Lord and our Lord Jesus. We lean upon him who is the rock of all ages, which is our Lord. He says, knowest thou this? Now, in verse 21 of Job 20, 20, 38, it says, Knowest thou it? The question he asks Job, he says, Knowest know thou it? Because thou hast been born, was born, and because the number of thy days are great. Brethren, we are to know that this part of us that is internal, the spirit is in us is an eternal spirit. The spirit is in us is of God. We are not our own. We are the child. We are children of God. Because his spirit dwells in us. And so we, we know to number our days. Our days are numberless. It's only what comes from heaven goes back to heaven. Flesh and blood cannot inherit eternal life. So we, part of us, is God. The spirit in us is God. It's God's. That's why the Bible says, you know, he are God's. We, we are God's with a common G. Jesus is God with a capital G. He is Lord with a capital L. He is Lord of all. So God, so God speaking to Job through the whirlwind, he said, know this, thou knowest it. Before the beginning of life, before the beginning of this world began, we were there with God. Because he says, the number of thy days are great. The number of our days as children of God is unlimited. The number of our days as children of God is eternal. And that's why we are ho our home is eternal. 
our life is eternal in God. Our, our hope is an eternal hope. He says, so God is asking Job all these questions because we ought to know so much things, but our limitation keeps us from knowing. And what is in us? The Spirit of God reveal unto us and all that we know of God, all that we understand of God is true faith. And that's why faith is so essential to get to have favor with God. All that we can perceive of God is true faith. We were not on earth when Jesus, when God came down and dwelt among men as Jesus, the Son of God. We were not here, but yet through faith, we knew, we believe that he came to earth to dwell among men. He did many great miracles. He opened the eyes of the blind. He, he, he caused the lame to walk. He felt the multitude. He gave the beatitude. He did so many great things when he was here on earth. So we know that the Bible says God was manifested in the flesh. We could see God through the man Jesus. And he said to Philip, when you see me, you see the Father. Because I am in the Father and the Father is in me. And here is God reunited himself to man from the fall of Adam. Because Adam, Adam failed. Adam failed. God gave Adam a commandment. And Adam failed God. But we have Jesus coming to be the second Adam. The one to take away all the wrongs that Adam did. And write it. And make us, bring us, reconcile us back to God. He came to reconcile us back to God and he went on and, and, and went on to ask him so many questions God be, uh, began to ask Job all these questions um, so God began to ask can thou bring the Mazora in the season can thou guide Articus with his son no knowest thou the ordinance of heaven canst thou sell dominion thereof of the earth can thou lift thy voice to the cloud that the abundance of water may cover thee what which one of us can call the water down from the heaven well we see what Elijah did when Ahab and Jezebel bring the children of Israel into um, idolatry and how and how Elijah prayed. And Elijah said, There shall not be rain upon the earth for three and a half years. And so it was. But he, true, he did that through the unction of God. He did that through the unction of the Spirit of God. Because he commanded that there should not be rain. But God is saying, Can thou lift up your voice to the cloud? that abundance of rain may cover thee. But we saw that Elijah did. Elijah lifted up his voice. He prayed to God. And then he says, there is a sound of abundance of rain. After three and a half years, there was no rain. And, and Elijah prayed. And there was a sound of abundance of rain. So God is saying that power we have the power if we have the understanding and know that we have power through him and through him alone. We have not power in ourselves. We can't do much in ourselves. We can do very little in ourselves. But when we connect to God, when we connect to the Almighty God, the Great I Am, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, when we have that connection, we can lift our voice to the cloud 
and that there can be abundance of rain. So Jesus said in this word, he says, if you have faith as a much as a grain of mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, be thou removed and cast down in the midst of the sea. So this is what faith does. And when we have faith as this, we have, we have favor with God. When we realize true God, that's why Paul says, you know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. We can do all things through Jesus. All things. He strengthened us. He give us the power. He give us the grace. Because he's God. Praise the Lord. Can thou lift your voice to the cloud and that there be abundance of water cover thee? Can thou send lightning that they may go and say unto thee, here we are. God gave us power. But we only have the power when we realize that power comes from him. We only have the grace and all the goodness of God when we realize all things come from God. And because of this, because this Job had the understanding that God was good. And he said, should we expect good things only from God and not bad things? The Lord give it, the Lord take it. When he lost everything, he said, the Lord give it, the Lord taketh. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That is to say, God give all good things. That is to say that God wants us to be happy. God wants to bless us. God wants us to be at peace. God wants us to have joy. Every good thing comes from God. But Job also understand that there is a devil. And many people don't understand that there is a devil. There is a devil. And this devil only come to kill, steal, and destroy. He's putting his eyes upon us. He's, putting, he's looking at us. And if we serve God, then he's, he target the people of God. So we see in those days that of all the people in those days, he targeted Job because Job was a man that God said he's a righteous man, he's an upright man. He feared God and his true evil. And because he was a man who feared God and his true evil, the devil targeted him. And the devil said to God, Yes, does he fear you for naught? Because you build a hedge around him. You give him all these substance, all these camels and the um, camels and the oxen and the, uh, and the goats and all those that you give it to him. That's why he's serving you. But we have to realize that no matter what we have, God comes first. Because without God, we have nothing. And without God, we are, we are nothing. All good things come from God. And when we have to suffer, let us know that God loves us. When we go through trials, when we go through tribulations, when hardship come upon us, when sometimes it seems so hard to make ends meet and sometimes things are difficult, and sometimes maybe we lose a loved one or something, as some sorrows come upon us, some disappointment. When those things come, remember that God loves us. Remember that God needs nothing but good for us. And that is the understanding that Job had. Because he realized that God was a good God. And when we realize that God is a good God, we have confidence, we can lean on him, we can trust in him. We can, we can just believe that he will not fail us. So, um, in Job chapter, um, in Job chapter 42, I want to look at what happened to Job in the end. What God did for Job in the last days. How God blessed him. How God opened doors for him. And um, I just want to read a few verses. So in verse 42 of the, the book of Job, 
the Lord answered, Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be hidden from thee. That is knowledge of God. So Job had knowledge of God. The knowledge he had is that he said, I know that thou can do everything. That's knowledge. I know that thou can do everything. Who is it that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered and I understood not. Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. The knowledge of God is too wonderful. You know, David looked at God and said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am fearfully and When we think about the way God created us, in his image, he gave us eyes to see, he gave us ears to hear, he gave us mouth to talk, he gave us feet to walk, he gave us hands to move and change things. And that knowledge is too wonderful. And all the organs and the blood vessels and all these things that make up our natural body. How, what a wonderful thing. How God created us in his image. So Job said, this, uh, um, who is it that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered that which I understand not. We talk about things that we do not have full understanding of because our understanding is limited. Here I beseech thee and I will speak and I will demand and declare unto, unto me. I have heard thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes have seen thee. Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Oh my Lord. So, coming to the understanding of how great God is and how powerful and how mighty and how and the wisdom of God, Job came to the see that he says, he says, I have heard, I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see thee. Job could not see God with the physical eyes, but through the spirit of his, his, or through the spirit, he said, I can see my eyes, my spiritual eyes is open. I can see thee now. I can understand who you are, how great you are. How mighty you are, how all-knowing you are, how you fill this universe. I can understand. My eyes see thee. I see thee through faith. Truly, faith has taken me to a place that I can see the living God. And it says, now I abhor, I hate myself. And repent in dust and ashes. When we see God, if we have a vision of God, we would look at ourselves and see oh, we are just like a worm. With the big, great God, the mighty God, yet as mighty and great as He is, He loves us. He cares for us. His hands are stretched out. His mercy is renewed every morning, though he is so great. He said, I've heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes have seen thee. Now God has spoken to Job and showed Job who he really was. 
And verse 7 of um, Job chapter 42, it says, And it was so that after Job had spoken these words unto after the Lord had spoken this word unto Job, the Lord said to if he hath his three friends, He says, My anger, my wrath is kindled against thee and thy two friends who have spoken the things that is not right unto my servant Job. Take therefore, therefore take these seven bullocks and rams and go to thy servant Job and offer them as burnt offering, and that servant Job will pray for you, and I will accept, lest I deal with you after your folly, in that he has spoken of me the things which is which was right. You have not spoken of me the things that was right, like my servant Job. So sometimes we have people who do not understand what God is and why things happen to us. His friends did not understand why Job went through so many things and the words that they said unto Job was not very encouraging because they thought maybe Job may have done something wrong. That's why he lost all his possession. That's why his, all his children were taken. And sometimes we have people who are ready to judge and sometimes we ourselves are ready to judge the situation and say, oh, that person is not serving God or that person would not fall in such calamities. And so, so was his friends. His friends was criticizing and did not understand and God's anger was kindled. When Job was waiting upon God because he said, I will wait until my change come. I will. And so that we who go through this situation Remember that God will come. We must withhold our righteousness, our integrity, and trust in the Lord with all, and in all things. We should give him thanks. Job was in this situation. He gave God thanks. And he did not, so he did not curse God. Even his wife said unto him, Do thou retain your integrity, curse God, and die. But he refused to do that. And his friend was not as encouraging as they should. And God told them to take a sacrifice to Job. Burnt sacrifice. Offer burnt sacrifice. And Job would pray for them. And so Job prayed for them. And God accepted the prayer of God, Job. Why God accepted the prayer of Job? Because Job was steadfast in his faith. He was on. He was on. He was steadfast. He was firm in his faith, that he trusted in the Lord. Despite his calamities, he was ready to pray to give God thanks. He was ready to acknowledge God as a good God, as a righteous God, as a merciful God. And um, so, going on. How God blessed Job in the end, it says, and there in verse 11, Job 42, verse 11, then came unto him his brethren and his sisters, that all had been, had been his acquaintance before, and they eat bread in his house, and they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord brought upon him. Every man gave him a piece of money, and everyone a earring of gold. So, in the end, when God is ready to bless us, everyone will come and bless us because the blessings of the Lord is seen. When God is ready to restore unto us, we will see the glory of God and we'll see everyone come around and bless us because they know the blessings of God is upon us. And God blessed Job because he remained faithful to all he went through. Job remained faithful to God. And that's what God wants us to do, to remain faithful regardless of whatever circumstances we come upon. And in verse 12 it says, The Lord blessed, so the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than the beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camel and a thousand ox and oxen, yoke of oxen and a thousand asses 
God gave back to Job more than he had in the beginning. It can happen to us. It will happen to us if we remain faithful to God. It will happen. Sometimes it seems like we have lost this. We have lost that. We have lost. We have mourned. We have saddened. All sort of thing can happen to us. No matter what it is. If even sickness. God can restore it. No matter what condition we find ourselves in. Remember that our source is in God. The source of all things is in God. And so God blessed Job. The latter was better than the beginning. He had everything. And God gave him back his children. He had seven sons and three daughters. God gave him back everything. And it says, in verse 24, it says, And the land, and, and all and in all the land there were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job. And their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. So God restored the daughters, his sons and his daughters. God restored them and his daughters were more even fairer than were any found in that land. We are out to take the story and see how God is good. And we know with God we cannot fail, we cannot lose if we stay in God. If we lean upon Him, if we trust in Him as Job did. God bring Him out. Because he, 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 His faith in God was unwavering. His faith in God was solid. And it shows that faith is essential to please God. Faith is essential to have favor with God. Faith is essential to get the blessings of God. Faith is essential for us to be close to God and for God to be close to us and to keep us and to provide for us and to restore it went on to say, after this Job lived, it gave him long life, 140 years. And his sons, he saw his sons and his sons' sons upon even the fourth generation. And Job died being full of days. Praise God. Brethren, faith and favor with God. Faith and favor with God. Let us from day to day exercise our faith in God, knowing that nothing is impossible to God. And whatever we endure in this life, know that God is with us. Whatever we come up against us in this life, knowing that God loves us, knowing that the Lord eyes is upon us if we trust him. If we trust him, he will make all things possible. He will restore the days that the conqueror worm and the polyworm has taken from us. If we trust in the Lord. And we will be as Job. We will have the blessings of God. We will have everything that the devil has. Some of us have lost our loved ones. Job lost his children, but God restored them back unto him. Nothing that we lose in this world. God will give it back to us. God will restore it. He is a restorer. So may God bless you, my brethren, as we come to the end. And remember that God loves us with an everlasting love. God will not leave us and he will not forsake us. And remember what he did to what, what happened to Job. And how God blessed him in the end. And remember the latter was greater than the former. And with us it will be the same. God will bless the latter days more than the former days. Trust in the Lord. Faith and favor with God. May the Lord bless you. 
as we come to the close. God bless you. Have a I'm going to ask Sister McLean, God bless you, to say a few words before we close. Sister McLean, God bless you. Good evening. Good evening. God bless Good you. And, on, and all those who are on the Zoom line this evening, I just want to say a pleasant good evening to one and all. Amen. And just want to say God's grace and mercy kept us. And Brother Tom, see, you have said it all. As I sit and listen, you know, to God be the glory. Great things we have done. You know, you cover everything in Job. And I said the last verse that you read, um, 48, 42, yes. that um, Job received uh, at the end of his um, year, he received more than yes. what he had before. Yes. His um, three daughters that died, God restored him yes. back. And his sons and his cattle and all that he lost. God has given him back. And I heard a touch of point that he prayed for his friends. You know, he prayed for his friends. And, you know, God heard the prayer. And Job prayed with an earnest heart, yes. with a clean heart. Yes. There was nothing. There was, even though the, their friends came and, uh, you know, uh, um, um, accused, uh, accusing him wrongfully, yes. you know, think of him to be what he is not, because if he really was a true man of God, what had taken place with him would not have taken yes. place, you know? And so, and Job prayed for his friend earnestly, yes. faithfully, and there was no end in his heart. You know, when you see someone is going through some hard stuff and things like that, you know, we like to put a label on people and to say if them was living right and if them not true Christian and this would not happen. One my Christian or oh, this not happening to me. You know but we as Christians we are challenged every day. Amen. We are challenged every day. And this evening at church, um after church it was um two sessions, so I went back and um I was talking to one of my church sister, you know, and she was talking about her daughter. And there's one problem or another. And I said, I don't know, you know, what happened with Christians, you know. We have so much problem going towards one half another comba. Yes. You know, but God is testing us to and watch how we react, how we behave and how we take it. Mm -hmm. You know, because the songwriter said trial and cross is in our way. The heart of the battle, the sweet of the victory, you know? And as Job, Job prayed for his friends, and he prayed earnestly. He prayed from a true heart. There was no nothing. There was no malice. There yes. was no envy. Yes. There was no vexation. That's there right. was no strife. So God heard his prayer. And so for us, you know, people will abuse us, accuse us, Speak evil against us. Mm -hmm. We have to forgive them. And when we forgive them, make sure we forgive them from our heart. We don't say we forgive them. And then when we see them on the street or somewhere, we we well, we walk the other side. I don't want to I don't want the woman the fish me and not talk for, you know. And that, I don't want that man know when you forgive. You know, the other day I was talking to someone I remember Don we was going to that church here on at Leland Road and you was um doing the um Sunday school and you was you was talking about forgiveness. And there was someone in there I don't I said I did say something to her and she asked her something and she was upset about it and she didn't talk to me. And I didn't I didn't say anything but we don't we were talking, I was just asking questions, and she just begs. And even when I tried to get close to her, she would pull away from me, saying, hello, she would pay me any man, and we were all working together. And that Sunday morning, she was in the, the in the Sunday school, and when you said, uh, when, when, when the disciple, I think it was Peter, asked you how many times he should forgive him, brother, if someone trespassed against him. 
and it's a seven, 70 times seven yeah. in a one day. I smile. <laughs> <laughs> and then after, and then after that person started to talk to me, say yes. You know, so say this to say that if Job, even though they accused Job and, mm -hmm. you know, let him feel away, you know, even though him knowing he didn't do anything wrong, you know, yeah. and their friends come and say the friends and come and to sit with him and encourage him and things like that, you know, they began to accuse him. But he prayed for them yes. and he prayed earnestly and he prayed from his heart and God heard his prayer. And so God delivered mm -hmm. Job before, before his friends and, you know, and he, he got back more than what he lost. So our God is a God of multiplication. He's a God of yes, enough. Yes. And when we serve him in spirit and in truth, no matter the drought and no matter the hardness, he will come true for yes, us. Yes. All we have to do is just be faithful, live right, live clean, live a holy life, continue to pray. As the topic, um, as the topic in the, on the prayer line, never stop praying mm. until you get to breakthrough. Because breakthrough will come somewhere or the other, yeah. somehow. Because he's a God of breakthrough. And he's a God that he cannot lie. And I would say, I don't mind waiting on the Lord. For I know he will come true. God bless you all this evening. And God bless you too, Brother Tim. Yeah, God bless You're you. You're doing a good work. You know, and Job, uh, the, the, this, um, the lesson of Job is really a challenging one. And for us to see how, how patient Job yes, was, yes. how faithful he was, leaning on the Lord, waiting on the Lord. He said, all my appointed time, mm -hmm. I'm going to wait till my change come. And it changed, it come. Yes. And so I will say as Job also. All my appointed time, I'm going to wait on the Lord. Okay, there must be a change. God bless you all. This is my few words in mm. Jesus' name. Yes, um, God bless you, Sister McLean. God bless you. Yes, um, we have to be a job. We have to have faith in God. We have to trust yeah. in God. And we have to remember that all good things come from God. And God is a God of love. God means nothing but good for us. God, you know, and we just have to humble ourselves at his feet and ask him for mercy every day. We have to, you know, he says his mercy is renewed every morning. We have to every be faithful morning, to right, him. We have to trust in him. Now. We have to know that he is God. We have to know our limitation. We are so limited. There's not, we can't change our circumstances. We can't turn night into day. We, we, not, we, don't, we can't do that. We can't turn darkness oh, into light. We you are limited. And when we know but we know God, we know the God who can do it. And the oh, other thing about it, everything. we have we can connect to him. We have a connection. You know, if we didn't have a connection, there'll be a problem. But we can connect to the Almighty God. And we know who he is. Job know that he could connect to God. And he knew God loved him. And he knew that God meant nothing but good. And he said, I will wait. Yes, he said, I will wait until my change come. He said, even if he slay me. Imagine that saying something like, if he slay me. Imagine having that faith in someone that that person would slay you. And yet you would trust him. That, that's his faith ultimate faith that that is faith lim that's that is the limit of faith you, you can't have more faith than that and that's what god wants us to have the more faith we have in god is the closer we are to him the more faith we have to god in god is the more favor we have with him and the more he consider us because faith is essential link to God. Because we can't see God. God, God is filled the universe. Invisible. God, we, we can't measure God. Because God, God, God is unmeasurable. He is so big. He filled the entire universe. We cannot see him with our natural eyes. That's why we need to have faith. 
knowing that He is. He made us, we did not make ourselves. He keep us. We can't say for sure we're going to wake up tomorrow if without God. Mm. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. But no. true God. No. True God. No. True faith in God. We can believe. We don't know who holds tomorrow. We, we know who holds tomorrow. God, the Lord, He holds tomorrow. He holds tomorrow. We do not hold tomorrow, but He holds tomorrow. But thank God, our God is good. Merciful, loving, forgiving, righteous. Can you imagine if we had a God who was unrighteous? I mean, just think about the fact of our, actually our, our leaders, our governor of this world. Just think about the people who rule this world. How wicked they are. How evil they are. All they want is war and more war. Can you imagine if our God was have such a mind? What what we, where would we God be? Is still like man. God is still like man. Suppose yes. Suppose God was like man. What would happen to us? We would be finished. We'd be finished. We couldn't even start. That's why the word said, if the, if in this life we have hope, if only in this life we have hope, we would be men most miserable. This life is not the life. Let us aspire, my brethren. Let us aspire. Yes. You know, I was in church today at um, Hackney Pentecostal, and I got some really powerful testimony. Really pow it was like a testimony time. Because one woman today. said she had bowel cancer and got a healer. And so many. You know, I'm not you know, so much people from that church give them testimony. About I tell you, man, cancer, God, real. You know, and all right, young man, oh my God, but it wasn't cancer. What he went through with knife and with gang and, you know, God saved him. You know what I mean? That church here, I don't think he's still there. Mm. Testimony, yes, there was one who testified in the last, I think but last week, say so he was, he was a gun man. <laughs> him sent the door out for bad things, a whole lot of bad things in Jamaica. And him say, boy, him say, God save him. God save him from, you know, so, so God is real. He can save us. He can provide for us. He can do everything for us. If we just trust in him. Just trust in God. Just be humble before him and serve him. And he will do the abundance above what we can ask of him. God bless you. God bless him, Sister Mike. It's always good to have you. You, you know, I know you've been through a lot. The devil has done a lot to you. Even but though I'm going through. Yes, I know, I know, I know. I say I look at you as a job. Because I know, know some of the things that the devil, as soon as you get up, the devil will kick you, knock you back down. You get up, him knock you back down, and you know, and you're still getting up and giving glory to God. Your end will be better. I know, I know. Your end will be better than the, than, than your end will be better, far better. That's Job. Just hold fast, hold fast to his unchanging arm. Praise the God. Praise the name of the Lord. Sister Rose, can you can you call, call us with a song or some uh, testimony or whatever? Sister Rose? Greetings, greetings. And I have to say that, yes, I also enjoyed the service today at New Pentecostal. There was so many testimonies, even more than what um, Brother Tom was saying about, was saying about um, that one lady. There were so many. And I have to say, I was so... Encouraged. Oh, overwhelmed. You know, like you're talking about Job, you're talking about trusting in God. I still remember a time, I think I've said it before, where I was praying about something. It was a church I was going to, and I had everything in the paper. It said, bring your stuff to the to the altar and write it down. And I was going there, and I was going there about a particular matter, and even a man came up to me and said, is everything okay? There was nothing wrong with me, but we have to be persistent because, you know, sometimes when we're praying about something, if we don't go back, if we keep on going back, someone says, someone will think that, oh, maybe you don't have faith, maybe you don't have trust, but we have to be persistent. And I think God loves to see that we're persistent because we know that he has the power to yes. change everything. 
situation. So we don't just give up and say, well, I did it once, I did it twice, I'm not doing it again. Keep on, keep yeah, on, yeah. keep on until you get your breakthrough. So I know that my God lives and I did get my breakthrough. And so I would only ask you to just continue to keep on praying, continue to keep on fasting, and continue to keep on seeking him, and he will give you your breakthrough. If sometimes he doesn't answer that prayer, that is still an answer. That means he's saying, no, I've got something better for you. Yes, whatsoever yes. About. His answer is no as well. Just like if I ask somebody for something and they don't answer what I'm asking, they don't give me an answer of yes. That still means no. So God is a good God. And I was just talking to a sister who's fasting on Wednesday. And I said, you know what, in agreement, I'm going to fast and pray with you. And I said to her in writing, I said, we serve a great big one for God. Then she sent the song to me and she said, oh, I love that song. And then I started rocking us and dancing to it as well. So that's why I'm going to just sing the chorus of that. Mm. We serve a great, big, wonderful God. We serve a great, big, wonderful God. Always victorious, always watching over us. A great, big, wonderful God. Yes, we do. We serve a great, big, wonderful God. We serve a great, big, wonderful God. Always victorious, always watching over us. Big, wonderful God. Mr. Great, big, wonderful God. Mr. Great, big, wonderful God. Always victorious, always watching over us. A great, big, wonderful God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Wonderful, merciful, compassionate, wonderful, hallelujah, God. Always victorious, always watching over us. A great, big, wonderful, powerful, holy God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus! 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 Hallelujah! 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 Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Merciful God! Amen! Lord! Thank you, Lord! Amen! Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! God. Praise oh, the Lord, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. God is good. It's to be praised. It's to be praised. It's to be praised. Praise his name. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Hey, praise the name of the Lord. We serve a great, big, wonderful God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We worship you, Lord. We Amen. Praise his name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Great, big, wonderful God. Great, big, wonderful God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Always victorious. Always watching over us. Keep us uh, under your blood. Uh. Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord, we thank you. We thank, thank you, Lord. We thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Father, we bless your name. Jesus. Our Father, we salute you. Thank you, Jesus. Our Father, we bow before you. Yes. Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you, Lord. We thank you. We praise you, Lord. We glorify you. Bless everyone, Lord. Bless your people. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bless your children. Bless us, Lord. Touch everyone, Lord Jesus. Touch everyone and your people, Lord. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercies. 
Oh God, your great God, your mighty God, hallelujah, your loving God, we thank you Lord, we thank you, we thank you for your mercies, we thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. We worship you right now, Lord. We worship you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise his name. Praise his name. Praise his name. name. Thank you for your children, Lord, who trust in you, Lord, who believe in you, Lord, who stand up in your promises. For your promises are sure. Hallelujah. You are God. You are God. You are God alone. My God, you are mighty, mighty, mighty God of Jacob, mighty God of Abraham, mighty God of Isaac. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. You deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt. You bless your people, Lord. Touch your children, Lord. Bind the enemy, Lord. Cast down the enemy. Cast down the enemy, Lord. We put your blood upon the enemy. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. We give you thanks. Bless everyone that's here present tonight, Lord. Bless Delia, my son. Bless him, Lord. Bless P.T., bless Sister McLean, bless Sister Rose and everyone else, oh God, we pray. Your grace and mercy will be upon us, Lord. We thank you for the God who you are, a loving God, a merciful God. We thank you, Lord, for revealing yourself to us. Have your way in our life, Lord. Forgive us of our shortcomings and perfection and our sins. Oh God, we are humble before you, Lord. We are nothing without you, Lord. Have your way, we pray. Bless us now, we pray. And we give you thanks, we give you praise. We give you glory. Indeed. Thank you, Lord. Everything to God in prayer. Yes, thank Lord. you, Lord, for open heavens. Thank you, yes, Lord, we for thank open you, Lord. doors. We thank you. Thank you, Lord, for breakthrough. Thank you, Lord, for deliverance. Yes, Lord. We serve a great, big, wonderful God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord. King of kings and Lord of lords. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Let your own fire burn in us, Lord. Oh God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Wash us, Lord. Cleanse us, Lord. Make us whole, Lord. Purify our hearts and minds and soul. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, purify us, Lord. Cleanse us, Lord. Lord, we are here before you, Lord. Unworthy and undone, but you bid us to come. You bid us to come. Oh, the Lamb of God, Lamb of God, we come. Provide for us, Lord. Hallelujah. Provide for us, Lord, in every way. Touch us. Heal our bodies. Heal our mind. Heal our soul. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank Amen. You, Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord for what you have done. Thank, Thank you. you, Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Amen. Amen. My brethren, God bless you. God bless you too. Let us keep holding on to Jesus because his love for us is beyond measure. We sometimes unworthy and undone, but he, he's faithful. He's faithful. He's a faithful God. God bless you, my brethren. Sister Max, Young Delian, P.T., God bless Sister P.T., God bless you. We give a very, very blessed week, a God-favored week. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. God bless you, Sister Rose. I will. God bless you. 